right, today is the day and we have been slammed all week with lots of things going on in my life, but we managed to slip in a little work on the tub. As you saw, we just tipped it up on its end to get some work done on the bulkhead. So without further ado, let's go see what we did. Now to get ready for this lamination, we're gonna go ahead and get some rough sandpaper and scuff the surface of anywhere we've got some resin or cloth already down. We wanna make sure we have good mechanical bond between our resin and glass layers. Vacuum things up, get things cleaned up, ready to go. Now what we're gonna be doing today is uh, laying this unidirectional fiberglass tape. And we're gonna put down about 14 layers in the video. So the first round is eight layers, get those cut off, measured out to be about 40 inches long. So I had this nice little uh, measuring stick to guide me, pull it off the roll and cut them off at our 48 inches. And once I've got, like I said, 14 layers, we're just gonna haul those over. And with the car standing on its end, we got a nice little shelf here in the door seals to lay those easy access to grab them and go. Put some resin down and start the lamination. Now these tapes lay in this channel that we cut in our foam core bulkhead. And we're gonna, in the end, put enough laminations in that that fills that whole inch thick trough that we've got created there. And as these tapes go down, they're gonna also make a bend. At one end, the bend's gonna go up onto the roof of the car. And on the other end, it goes down to the floor. So it's just a matter of uh, layer after layer, laying these tapes in. These tapes are just a fractionally narrower than the trough that we're laying them in. So I'm just staggering them, put one a little bit to the right, one to the left, just to keep filling that trough as we go. As I said, down at the bottom here, it goes into another little pocket kind of in the way. So I'm going to switch to another view here. Now this pocket is, uh, makes this bend and that's going to be the bolts holes for the subframe are going to come through the bottom of the floor and attach to this uh, reinforced section that we're doing here. Another attachment point up about four inches off the floor. And then of course, one up at the top of the roof. And those bolts will go through this whole lamination. So good solid structure to bond to. And you've seen we switched now from the unidirectional tape to putting a fiberglass cloth on. That cloth is just to uh, move the stresses from that lamination of the unidirectional fibers out onto the bulkhead. And as you talked about in another video, that this also helps to uh, consolidate the resin into those unidirectional tapes. I said this, this layer of cloth lapping about an inch, inch and a half off into the fiberglass of the bulkhead. Here's a view down of how nice and clean it looks after that fiberglass cloth is uh, applied over there to hold that unidirectional fibers in place. But short lived because now we're going on to another layer, of course. And we're just going to go through the same process again. Another six layers of unidirectional fiberglass tape laying down the trough. We won't go through all six layers. But as soon as we've got those uh, layers done, it's back to another layer of cloth. And if you notice, we've uh, gone to a little bit wider now. This one's going to lap three inches or so onto each side of our unidirectional lamination. Now you can imagine with this uh, whole trough filled up about an inch thick laminations, it's a pretty tough piece of fiberglass. And in an impact or a rollover or whatever, that would easily tear out of the structure if it was just covered by one or two layers of cloth on the outside. So as we keep working these layers up, this fiberglass cloth is going to just keep going out wider and wider into the bulkhead and tie the whole bulkhead into a much stronger structure. Now, I've also come to the consideration that I might be adding a steel roll bar into here. Um, but it'll just be the rear hoop and looking to create some kind of roll bar system that can be bolted into the car in case I'm thinking I might have this as a track car as well, doing maybe a time attack. So if anybody out there could put in the comments if they know anything about or where I can find information about 
the standards for roll structure for time attack or what these tracks that have open days for the public to come onto, say in Portland, Las Vegas, or Northern California, somewhere, any of those tracks, what kind of uh, standards they require in roll bar structures. Like I said, I'd like to put in something that is removable so my regular day driver and car doesn't have roll bars in it. Just the one in the back that would be kind of bonded into this whole section. Anyway, once we've got these uh, cloth covering this thing, we're going to leave this structure and come back to it another day. But we have the other side to do as well. I said there's 14 layers on here now. That's about one third of the way up. We've got 40 layers to go. 40 layers on two sides. Now here's the other side. And it's just the same routine going back and forth, layer after layer, fiberglass cloth, layer after layer, more fiberglass cloth, but we'll just end it there. Won't bore you with a repeat of the same thing you've just seen, but that's reinforcements. There you go. That roll structure getting built into the bulkhead. And like I said, if anybody out there has any ideas of information about where I should go to find out on regulation roll bars for time attack or any other track specified roll structures, I'd appreciate that in the comments. I've also got some comments asking about resin and gel coats, things like that. And so to go along with this video and that lamination we just did on Jay's super suggestions today, we're gonna to talk about resins and especially mixing epoxy. Let's go see that. As I said, I've had a couple of people asking in the comments some questions about gel coats and resins. Um, so we're going to do a real quick cover of a couple of the different resins and go specifically into epoxy since that's what we are using. Um, epoxy, of course, having the structural advantage way over any of the other resins. Um, we did use some vinyl ester in the mold. And I'm going to tell you why I use vinyl ester rather than polyester. Of course, the most popular resin out there is polyester and it is the because of it's the cheapest. But here is the one reason why I use vinyl ester when I'm doing anything with the ester resins. And that is because when you use a polyester and you're working on a vertical surface, somehow when the exothermic or the heat builds up in the reaction to cure it, it goes to a stage where it gets thin. The viscosity um, gets reduced by the heat and the glass slips off on a vertical surface. And I've found with a vinyl ester, it doesn't do that nearly as much. And that is a big savings because you don't have to worry about finding ways to uh, mechanically hold the resin and cloth in place. So I've just switched to the vinyl ester. It's only slightly more expensive than polyester. So easily, almost anybody can afford to just switch to the vinyl esters. Now, of course, we go now from there to the epoxy. Anything that you're gonna build with structure into it needs some kind of strength. I would just skip polyester altogether, unless I guess you're building a boat and you're gonna to have to build massive thick layers. But you're using uh, cores and things like that to build your strength, epoxy is the way to go. Well, anyway, as part of this little uh, super suggestions, I'm just gonna take you over now, a little video of us mixing some resin, showing you how I do the ratios and mix the resin. Let's go see that. Okay, this is the process I go through to keep a regular routine so that you don't screw up the ratios and mix up a batch that never cures. Um, got a cup on here, teared so that the cup shows up as zero. Then we take our three to one epoxy and we pour in an amount we feel like is about what we can work with. Putting on pretty heavy, so six ounces, that's good. And now this is a three to one ratio, so we have 6.085. So we go 6.085. Then we divide that by three, gives us 2.02, .02, and then we add our 6085 back, 6.085, and that equals 8.13. That gives us our total that we need to pour in. So we get our part B, 
and our target measurement is 8.1. So we're going to pour until we get close to 8, then we'll slow down. We went to 015, that is so close, that is perfect. Now, swinging around here, I'm using a mixing stick I used on the last batch. I do that on epoxy. I would never do it on polyester because it would add to the kick and it would make it go faster than we want. The epoxy is slow enough that uh, we don't do it anyway. Mixing the epoxy up, you'll notice that it uh, goes cloudy in the beginning and starts to clarify once it gets mixed up a little bit. But we'll never judge that as our finished mixing. We've got lots of mixing to do. Epoxy is actually pretty good at uh, curing when you don't mix it really, really good. But we're going to mix it and then after we've got it to the clarifying state, we're going to scrape the sides, go back to stirring it again. Just pick random patterns to scrape the bottom. Once you've mixed a little bit, scrape the sides again. That's the critical thing is scraping the sides because we don't want a little pocket we missed down in there or something clinging to the sides. But I'll go through about five or six times of the same kind of pattern, scraping the bottom in little swirls. Then go back to scraping the sides. As I said, after about five or six times, then we're done. And I'll pick a side that I don't want the brush to lay on. Squeegee my stick off, and we're ready. Okay, so there you go. Real quick on Jay's super suggestions and the video today. Anyway, hope you liked this video. And anyway, thanks for stopping by. Come back and see us again.